You make my boing boing uh, boing. On that note. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Sonic Movie Show, the only show that reviews every video game movie in existence. My name is Ethan, and with me here in the zombie apocalypse, as always, is Devin. How's it going? This is my purpose in life. I agree. Mm -hmm. And joining us here in the Dead Trigger Initiative is the new recruit, David. I don't want to get a lap dance with this girl. Damn, that's right. dude. That's right. That's right. Well, <laughs> folks, so mean about it. Yeah. We finally made it here. The eighth movie in our draft, episode two hundred one. If you want the full breakdown on how we got Halfway here, almost. but we got here nonetheless. Uh, no, next episode will be halfway. Say, I said almost. I said almost. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. We are Sheesh. at the twenty seventeen film Dead Trigger. I know, Dead David, this trigger. was your pick uh, for this. And we watched it for y'all's listening and viewing pleasure. Um, before welcome. we talk about this film itself, I guess we need a little background and perhaps some uh, personal anecdotes, if there are any, on uh, yeah. the video game that this movie, or video games, there's two, that this movie is based off of Dead Trigger and Dead Trigger 2. I think there's a subtitle in one of them. I think Dead Tricker Survivors or something in that colon. I don't know. But still. Uh, David, have nope. you ever played Dead Trigger for the iPhone I... or Android? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, I like. I immediately understood what type of game this was when the movie started because uh, I had no experience. Uh, I was interested to see like what type of game they were going to try to emulate. Um, and I sort of like understood it seemed like a a horde thing, I assume. Um, but I've never played it, so I really don't know. Devin, have you ever played Dead Trigger or Dead Trigger 2 for the iPhone or Android? You also missed Facebook. Uh, it was also Unfold. released on Facebook. Really? Uh, mm. At least the second one was in 2014. So I guess uh, it would have had mouse support then. <laughs> yeah. Because this, um, this is an FPS. <laughs> is it? See, yeah. I was envisioning all the mobile ads where you're shooting the different barrels as yep. they're rolling. And then you can either get more people or guns, but you got to be careful because you get run over by the barrel. You lose too. Oh. Right? But then Folks, the I hordes, streamed uh, a game that actually makes all those mobile game ads real. I was disappointed that type of game, not in this collection. Uh, I, was very I would play that one. I feel like I'd be good at it. I would. Know, so. And that's what they, that's how they get you though. These mobile game ads, they, they fail them on purpose. So you're like, you idiot. It's so simple. I can do that. Because they want you to do that. <laughs> but most of those games aren't even real. Um, that type might actually be real. But no, this is um, a first-person shooter series uh, for mobile. I guess also Facebook uh, as well at some point when they still had games on that platform. Um, I played 10 minutes of each of these games for this episode yesterday. Uh, they are not good. But it is what you would expect from a touchscreen shooter where, like, the left side of the screen you drag around like a virtual analog stick, the right side for the camera virtual, and then there's a fire button, a reload button, and, like, an aim down sights button where they just kind of zoom in a little bit and just shift the gun to the center, right? Um, enemies are obviously slower because you cannot shoot and aim at the same time unless you are shooting the whole time by pressing the shoot button and then dragging around. So that's a little annoying. And hey, in the sequel, there is no shoot button. It automatically fires when you aim at a guy and are close enough. So I guess they figured that mm -hmm. out there. And there's unlimited ammo. Um, this is what David suggested. It is just there are zombies and you shoot them all. Um, I did not play very far. I played 10 minutes each. But it's like, here's some small levels. And like I think these games are old. So, of course, on my iPhone 13 mini they run at like 60 frames a second because they're old. They look okay um, for what a 3D is it a, mobile game. Is it on rails or is it like more? No, of a you move you move around defense. like it's a, but like it's such a linear level where it's like you either go or you just don't progress. So it's like whatever. Um, and I will say this: the second game does maybe maybe got some inspiration from a, a major um uh, uh 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 last of us video game um zombie uh, video game <laughs> we're like hey the second oh. game has npc characters who you talk to and they were in there in the levels and like you have to they escort you and you stuff and 
and stuff like that. I think they got some of that inspiration. And then there's just like a building size zombie who sticks his hand in and you run away. And then I stopped playing. So um, that's my experience. Um, I did not have fun. But so this, instead of I like feel Ellie, like, is it like Nelly it was just or random, something? random survivor woman who vaguely looks like Jill Valentine. Um, mm. So yeah. From Bill Valentine. <laughs> no, they just call her the survivor. I'm sure she gets a name if unless she dies. Um, you know, the game's not fun, but this isn't <laughs> a game for us who plays video games. This is for like know. the kid in high school who might have a 360 at home of this era. This would have been around the time, maybe an Xbox one, you know. Um, but they're in school, and so, like, this is the only game that they can play, or, like, you know, and it's... Gotcha. And it's one of those games where it's, like, every level you get some cash, but if you watch this video, you'll double your cash. You know, it's, like, oh. just constantly ads and stuff, and um, the slot machines and the lot, you know, all that stuff. It's just, it's one of those, wow. um, yeah, I'm so, surprised uh, that this got a movie, then, if it's really, like, a pretty same. bad game. I well, mean, I have, uh, some I'm history sure it's this movie. That's I would love to hear it. Interesting, because uh, I was to hear looking it, it up I'm afterwards. To hear that. Um, for reasons we might get into, because uh, okay. sometimes these types of movies, uh, I'm I get intrigued of production and uh, whatnot. Um, I'm not going to read like the whole article uh, verbatim, um, but I'll kind of sum it up. And there's like kind of multiple things happening in this, but basically, uh, so yeah, they wanted to make this movie and the I'll say original director uh, by the name of Mike Cuff, uh, like wrote the script and wanted to wanted to direct and he was all good to go. And uh, he only got through two days of shooting before he was fired and they did have to this day has not been disclosed. Why it sounded like director. Yeah. And they wind up getting uh, mostly known for his writing, uh, Scott Windhauser uh, to fill in his place. and I've looked up these guys and I, both of them. I don't, I'm not familiar with any of their stuff they've made. Um, but still, yeah, Mike Cuff was fired two days in because um, he uh, actually remains in control of the Dead, tri- Dead Trigger IP and his hopes to develop a TV uh, series, it says. So maybe we'll get a TV series at some point. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was fired two days, which is like one part of the story. But then uh, towards the last like week into filming, the last week of filming, uh, and like uh, there's this article kind of breaks it down. It's a deadline article uh, titled The Perils of Filming in Mexico. Cartel rumors and missed paydays fuel latest oh, production shit. shutdown. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> wow. So basically the gist of the story is some people. I'm not going to say like factual is what happened, but some people. But what, what what did happen was some of the taxi drivers who were driving like cast members and staff and whatnot to set. Uh, weren't getting paid properly uh either that was through like the production company or like a a third party that the pr- production company works with um the article mentions that how like sag afro even got involved to make sure that these people got compensated uh, or at least we're going to reach out um they are, i don't i haven't found anything yet to say how the story concluded but long story short the some of the drivers are getting really frustrated and actually blocked like traffic going into the the oh. the shoots so nice. people so actors couldn't leave directors couldn't leave they did a wildcat strike um and um but then there was other other taxi drivers trying to come in and like you know steal like basically steal oh, scab the work and that's um it basically scab but then and there's like spanish being thrown around and no one's actually it says it quotes nobody actually heard any of the drivers say the word cartel which sounds the same both english and spanish Spanish, but the like a Spanish language version of the telephone game where words and phrases change the more they're passed along. Word spread quickly that the cartel was coming and the Americans should get out of town and fast. Um, so basically, the members of the cast and crew like ran off the set <laughs> two days wow. before shooting ended um, and they like left Mexico. Uh, so they never finished filming? <laughs> uh, is my understanding is they were pretty much done, but like, yeah, it was a whole thing. Uh, the like, article is pretty long and in depth. Things. Uh, it's a pretty good article. I got through most yeah. of it, but like, I, I would highly recommend reading it because it like it, they have quotes from like, uh, um, like some of the people who worked on it, like the uh, co-chair of uh, of the uh, 
uh, was it a California Labor Commissioner, I think, is mentioned in this too. Sag Afra, like they have a lot of interviews um, or uh, quotes and whatnot in this interview. Um, mm-hmm. But it says that uh, last the last quote I could find was, uh, "You know, everyone will, will be paid. Sag is happy, um, and we'll finish the last three dates of shooting next month in Nevada." So oh, they did okay. finish shooting, but they went to Nevada. Um, okay, but also okay. the article mentions how they filmed in some like quote unquote sketchier areas like more rundown parts of town yeah of course it was sketchy there were zombies there (laughs) (laughs) right that was part of it but i think like there was part of that i think people maybe were starting to like convince themselves that maybe something was worse than what it was is what kind of seems like this is my personal opinion um but yeah it, it was an interesting story but yeah the director was fired two days in and then on top of that the whole possible cartel coming to fuck their shit up uh, potentially was also on top wild. of this movie. Um, uh, but I yeah, wonder movie... if that... Go ahead. I was just going to say, I wonder if that explains the end to this movie, which kind of <laughs> came out of nowhere, which I'm sure we'll, we'll get, get to. We'll get to but, that. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think that explains that a little bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, this movie was like, I think originally screened in like 2017. 2018 which is one on our list we have 2017 but it technically didn't come out until 2019 okay. on oh, r- director oh, home okay. video so some of the movies um, on our spreadsheet Moscow, are like that originally. where um oh it's it's like one weekend basically a screener is this year but then it was next year that was actually like for people to watch but it gets counted yeah, it as first, the year uh, before yeah, it was first screen at the 2017 Moscow International Film I Festival and, then, and it was released theatrically I guess it would came out in theaters, Ethan, uh, in video on demand on May 3rd, 2019. Wow, so right wow. before we started this podcast. Uh, yeah, babe, um, around, 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 that around that time, around that time. Yeah, for sure. Um, wow. But yeah, that's okay. all I'll say uh, in terms of the history, but it's kind of a crazy. Pretty interesting. I, and I feel like I only, like like I said, I hit the kind of big heavy pointers. There's some great quotes surface, in this. Surface level. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Wow. Um, yeah, we watched this film. <laughs> uh, like we said, it's based off a mobile game. I am curious as to how that got thrown around. I have a feeling it's like someone being like, I have a lot of money. I own this game. I want a movie. That that would be my guess. That makes sense. Um, well, the, direct, you the said, like, director, Mike Cuff, uh, He's a partner with many video game technology companies, it says, mm. and connected to the game okay. industry worldwide. So uh, he might have just been a you know a friend of friend who's like, yeah, I'll make this movie. Or an uh, investor, maybe even. Because you said he has like IP ownership, right. so maybe he, he yeah. bought it somehow. I imagine like the license of, you know, for film and television and whatnot. Not that he owns the game, but maybe he does. Um, yeah, this was, uh, well, I'm not going to give my thoughts first. This is, uh, no, it says, David's yeah, it says he owns IP. Sorry. I didn't mean oh. to cut you off, but I, I did see it. Yeah. 200 million player dead trigger IP remains in his control. Okay. And it says it is developed as TV series. I just misread it earlier. So yeah, he owns Interesting. basically the IP of dead trigger straight so up. So somehow he got a hold of it, or maybe he is the actual guy who, uh, owns the company. I don't know. But, um, David, you picked this movie. So therefore, it is your fault that we watched it. We'll get into reasons why um, we might uh, think that way. But I want to know your thoughts on the movie first. Go for it. You know, explain uh, yourself. This, I'll say this was an Oreo of a movie to me, but the two cookies on either end were stale. Um, <laughs> I think um, <laughs> I enjoyed the middle and I think that while this was a bad movie I think they leaned into the badness a little bit uh, where there's multiple uh, times where they're just like I-, I remember one scene he kills a zombie and then he just picks it up and there's like zombies walking up the stairs and he just like throws the throws zombie it. to like domino them down uh, I thought that was funny. Uh, multiple other things that it's just like the shotgun, the. So oh, the in the training sequence, in the training sequence, he just drops the gun and blows his own head off. I was like, I feel like after that point, it set up for me. I was like, oh, this is going to be like, like they're leaning into the silliness a little bit. Um, I think it still was not like. Uh, leaned into in an insanely fun way like uh, I think they leaned into it a tiny bit uh, but they were also at times I feel like trying to be serious um, 
but I I thought I was going to not like the movie in the beginning and I ended up uh, kind of liking it. Um, not in a I'll watch this again, maybe, but uh, I was uh, surprised. OK, OK, <laughs> um, Devin. Uh, I'm going to be more of a Debbie Downer on this movie than David is. Oh, wow. I get it. It's David's movie. And I usually love these kind of awfully just, just done movies. Like this movie had a, a major pacing issue, a major, uh, I mean, I know, I don't think the budget was big on it, but just like decisions were made that to me just makes it just look worse. Whether it was, CG like having green screen zombies for certain parts of the movie, and then other times, oh, we are shooting them in front of us. Like that whole training montage where they're stabbing mm-hmm. them. The zombies aren't there. There's like CG or not CG, but they're green screened in, yeah, right. uh, and it just um, looks real bad. And I like if this movie came out in 1990, I'd be like, whatever, pass. But this is a 2019 film uh, or 2017 film. At this time, there's shows like Walking Dead and have been around and I know those probably have maybe a bigger budget overall than this movie, but still <laughs> sure, there episode, is like, <laughs> there's still like a direction you can take zombie movies in on a cheap budget and get away with or people will be less or it won't be as noticeable or you're like, you know, what, I'll let it go. It doesn't look perfect. Maybe the fake blood doesn't look great, but like Thanks. they're trying. Um, but this, there was just a lot of elements that are just clearly bad decision-making. No, that's why I even looked up this movie in the first place. And that's why I read that article because I was like, this makes a lot of sense that the original guy was fired, script was changed, and it seems like they were kind of, you know, running through this movie as quick as possible. Um, it sucks because you have Dolph uh, Lundgren in it, the main guy who plays Ivan Drago in Rocky IV. Right, that was his, know. Not his first movie, it was the second, but that was like his big role. And uh, I, looking he's at this movie, I'm like, movie oh, he's star. a washed yeah. up guy who found a thing but no actually he's been in multiple movies every year since his career started there's like maybe three years where he wasn't in a movie and in most an years aquaman. he's been in multiple movies he's so been like aquaman ex- all the expendable yeah, movies the last one <laughs> uh you know he's been in a bunch of stuff he's been a, a bunch of, of stuff and a lot of stuff i'm sure that are of this quality too so i don't I, I think he's just a guy who likes being in movies and just wants to get paid yeah um, and like unfortunately like, I don't think he did necessarily anything wrong. It's once again, the script that was given to him and whatnot. And he couldn't save this movie. This is a B movie without any of the charm that I like of B movies. Like, I'm just like, like, there's some funny parts. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think they were trying to be funny. I'm, I'm going to disagree with David. I don't think they were trying to be really? campy. I feel like this was just a bad movie. Like the shotgun part was like out of nowhere. It felt like for me. And then they just like drop in like, oh, yeah, he's dead now. Like they didn't. I don't even know yeah, why no, that man. happened. That, was, I was, that was crazy. I was just confused <laughs> throughout the entire movie. They're very callous to people dying. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the set designs like were just so shitly done. I get once again, small budgets. I get it. But like there are some of the kids, the kids room, for example, is just uh, like stock photos, like product photos you'd see on. Uh, a guitar a gu- uh, guitar shop you know just like straight up like the photos you'd get from like if you went on guitarcenter.com right now and he printed that out and he has that as like posters on his wall and i'm like that that's not how like people live in houses like like i get like once again the budget thing but you could even go to ikea for cheap and buy like a cheap poster and put that on the wall and that would have felt more lived in it didn't it wouldn't have looked like a set as much it looked like a set same with all the places in the in the uh, at the base itself, it seemed like the exact same place where they wanted to go to go fight the zombies because it probably was. Um, it looked like multiple times they were reusing the same area. Just t- sometimes it's nighttime, sometimes it's morning. But yeah, there's like nothing on the walls. It looked very like, and if there was anything on the walls, it's just like here's an AK-47 printout for some reason. Yes! Um, it just, it just was like, <laughs> but like you don't think that's like on purpose at all? Like none of. I the, think it's on like, purpose because like... they had no money to make the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, well, maybe I'll say I'll let you continue. I won't <laughs> yeah, yeah, push yeah. back too much right now. I'm not trying to like throw throw all my thoughts out right now, but I I've just I've watched a lot of B movie like horror films, and there's a difference between Dead Alive, Peter Jackson's Dead Alive, uh, which I know you both have watched because we watched it when we were younger. But I know it's probably been a minute. But Dead Alive is a perfect example where it's like 
there's a we know when to make it over the top you know when to make it silly and if they were trying to make it silly i didn't see that it really just felt like hey we have one action like action movie star in this and everyone else and they're in some of these people tried their best i, I mean but i just don't care about any of these characters if the the narrator is the main is the kid at first but then it's like no it's really about Dolph Lund- lundgren's character um and yeah, I, and then the church, uh, I can keep going, but it's just like there's clearly decisions that I think that they made that were bad where like, if yeah, if you have a budget issue, I still think like you can still do certain things on a low budget if you have good direction. I think this is on the director and of course them firing the guy I don't think helps uh, the first director. So yeah, I just think there's many of those issues and me and Ethan have watched a lot of movies too where when we had these bad movies, look up into it. It's like, yep, there's been a script issue or this was in movie hell for 14 yep. years before it got made. But yeah, I, man, I don't know. <laughs> I think All it's right. me. I would okay. maybe watch it with you both. Like on like a, you know, like a, uh, you know, like a watch along. I'm never watching this again, but I don't know if I want to do that either. Like, I don't know if it has like, the same charm as like street fighter or the Mario movie. Sure. Um, well, there's a difference too. between camp and like, you know something that's silly but it was endearingly trying to do it we're like oh it's cute that they tried that's what you get the camp from right and i never saw any like endearing qualities in this it wasn't like oh like this is silly but like they take it seriously no it's just i mean let me take a step back david 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 i feel like i watched a different movie i I cannot believe that you guys are i don't know okay david i'm sorry I'm really sorry, David. <laughs> I think this is the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. That can, oh, this makes the racism in Postal seem charming. This makes that the lack of budget and set location in Oni Chambara seem luxurious. <laughs> this movie is terrible. This movie is beyond <laughs> awful. This is a parody of parodies. It's in the sense that it's trying to be serious. This movie is so bad. This movie's script is terrible. Many characters are just 80 yard in. The entire beginning, I feel like none of the audio was used, and they used a soundstage later to ADR in all of their lines. Yeah. The, was pretty all bad of a sudden, the they walk from a forest environment into what I now imagine is Mexico, because all of a sudden they're in the middle of nowhere. And then houses are being built there. Like they walked into private property, and they're like, yep, we're filming here. Yeah, there is the f- one part where they, like, they like go in like a they're like on a side street and they looks like they walk down like an alleyway and all of a sudden they're on a construction site yeah in the, desert. In the middle like, of a <laughs> desert which just is stuff Nevada. like this where it's like gee a lot of stuff got cut a lot of stuff wasn't thought out and they're like well we just gotta film this because we are on a timetable apparently the cartel is after us um no man this movie's so bad this movie's so bad this made me actually look up Dolph's career because I'm like, did is he just trying to get? Is this guy like addicted to something that's expensive? Is this guy got a mom on a ventilator he needs to pay for? Why is he in this movie? And no, the man just loves being in a lot of movies. That's fine. He gets a pass. I agree with Devin. Where I'd think, you know what, the script is just... really, really bad, and you got to do what you got to do. And he seems like a career actor who's just like, I'm making through this film whatever characters are picked up and dropped not in a way where you would see in a zombie film or any film with a large cast where you know they're all gonna die for the most part gee they even name drop suicide squad inadvertently but that's what it felt like we have this beginning opening where like we're getting the team together all these misfits who are mostly just kids that sit down and wave their hands in front of a fake oculus quest Except for one of them's like a like a like a a Z tier MMA fighter wannabe lady who wants to to do something. Everyone else is just like nobody, and they get them all in anyway. They tried to do the whole you're learning, you're training, but training's got to stop early because we got a mission now, and there's no one else to help but us. The dead triggers. We could be any soldier, but we decided that we're gonna name ourselves something special. Cause what else do they fight? 
when there's a zombie apocalypse and there's plenty of resources around because they sh they show normal ass cities, there's not like you're at war with other people. You're just trying to kill the zombies. So they're any soldier. This movie is so fucking bad, David. I'm what? so sorry you picked <laughs> it. And I'm sorry okay. to myself and like... I'm sorry to Devin that we didn't counterpick this shit. I Defend like... yourself. <laughs> I feel like this cannot be. I feel like we're coming off of the last movie, and you're trying to. No, to I don't hold grudges like, like here, that. Say, I told you I hail listen, Mary picked all my fucking films. No, They're all better than this one, though, so far. I just I can't believe that because, like, so I watched uh, both of these movies like one night and then so like Monday night and then Tuesday night. Monday night, uh, watching Mario. And, you know, you know, Jen, I'm watching it on the big screen in the, you know, the living room right there. And, you know, Jen was like, I can't watch this, and, like walked away. But like she watched the entire dead trigger movie because we were laughing. It was like fun because it was so stupid. Like, I feel like it, you guys are, I think, taking it too I, I seriously say, though, to, to, to pull the partner. I'm not saying in, this is a good movie. I'm just saying this is not part like, of it with me as well. Okay. She, like, she looked at me she's like, this is awful. <laughs> okay, it's also pulled yeah. apart the thing. My cat didn't even watch this film. She refused, and she took yeah, a nap true. somewhere else. So I, I um, know, but I'm just, I don't know. I, I'm not saying it like it can't be I'm not saying this either. is not like a good B-tier. Like, I understand I'm certainly like, not they did saying not that. successfully <laughs> pull off the campy vibe. I'm just saying there's elements of that in here. Yes, well, they had say... cameras, they had people, and they had lines to say. That's a it's movie. That <laughs> but that, that doesn't make a good movie just because they had those things. <laughs> the, let's look up. Can we look up the budget for this? Because I, I, I feel I've been like. looking it up the okay. last 20 minutes. I can't find I, anything. Really? Because okay. it was also, zero. Like, this felt like, like this felt, though, there was I, I thought we were going to get a campy movie at first because of the uh, like the intro was like an ad, which reminds me of I haven't seen it like in Starship entirety, Troopers or something Starship like Troopers, that. Yeah. You know, Hell Divers 2 is based off of. But Starship Troopers is a gr good movie of where satire is clear and it works because everyone's over the top. No one's over the top in this movie. No one's like telling me I'm a I'm a joke on the the action hero. I'm a joke on the the guy who's over his head. I'm a joke on the the lost um you know or the last uh survivor in the hospital who was wearing a perfectly clean lab coat and had sure. full makeup on. We didn't even talk about great. the the CEO lady and her bullshit. Like that was there's a lot of attention so to detail cliche. that is not done well to me that tells me this wasn't on purpose. It just seems like because sometimes they all have raggedy clothes on like sometimes. But then the lab, like the like I said, the, the, the lady from the lab, she's like in looks like she just walked out of a costume store. Uh, but then there's stuff like in the helicopter scene, there's no motion on the camera. That's a huge pet peeve of mine when you do like vehicle scenes where people are supposed to be in a vehicle and it's just a straight mm. shot. There's no movement. like a video game, not to give this any yeah. defense, but yeah, yeah, like yeah. a video game camera. But it, like, I'm like, I know you're just sitting on a set, like you're not presenting any like a uh, uh, way for me to get like invested into the atmosphere of the film. And I'm like, I don't feel like I'm in a helicopter. I just feel like you guys are just sitting on set, you know, just going through the lines. Um, because I don't know, like there's a lot of stuff in this movie. Like I said, there's like decisions that were made, whether it's like mostly attention to detail stuff, whether it's like, hey, we cut this movie where they go down this street and all of a sudden they're in New Mexico. So uh, I might have to I eat my own socks. <laughs> I, don't, I cannot believe that this is true, but this, this is the number that I'm seeing on the Internet. It's ten million dollars. <laughs> that's Which basically a, nothing. That's great. <laughs> so that is 10 basically million, and then someone said they made 150,000 of revenue. I got David, the first we, well, zombies we, we see in the better, opening so. <laughs> are all children who cannot keep a straight face. They're smirking as they walk <laughs> because they're not taking it seriously. Like and you just, the opening line, the opening line is from this mm -hmm. point of view character who didn't matter because he's actually in less scenes than the other kids in his squad, but whatever, is like, his name is Walker. And they found out the blah, blah, blah. It's like he's talking about something else. They're like two different ideas. That's a bad script. Here's another one. I wrote this down. 
I wrote this down. This so movie has so this movie. This it. movie <laughs> has racial stereotypes, but the positive kind, where like Asians are good at math, and like Latino women are strong fighters. Like it's one of those types of things where like, gee, and everyone else is white. Um, when we see the 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 Microsoft Word pictures printed out of like the different guns on the wall in that classroom, and Dolph is like, these are guns. And if everyone ever shot a gun, and then uh, uh, um, the Asian guy, his name is something Chen, I forgot because he just disappears in this movie. He was Daniel thrown Chen. somewhere. Daniel Chen. Daniel Chen. Daniel. Yeah. Um, he's like, he's I've, he says, I've never shot a gun before. And this other guy says, speak for yourself. He did! <laughs> he said, I've never shot a gun before! <laughs> He's not talking for all of you. He says, I've never shot a gun before. And then Smartass is like, speak for yourself. When I was 12, I held a rifle. (laughs) Shut up! (laughs) This movie is so bad. And I'm repeating myself. I'm repeating myself. But this movie repeated itself in in my brain. Mm. I hate this movie so much. This is my least favorite movie we've ever watched. That's my entire review. This is crazy. It's my entire That's review. So crazy. I don't, I'm I starting hear... to wonder what Postal was like. If you... <laughs> <laughs> don't watch that, please. Don't okay. Watch that. Postal at least like looked. I hate. I can't believe I'm giving Postal any credit, but Postal at least looked like a mo- like looked like a. Movie Postal had, had wit. It was trying to do. It was trying. It it yeah. actually succeeded in maybe some elements for sure. It was just extremely racist and mean spirited to to certain groups of people in ways where it's like that's it's not good. But at least had like an attempt at being like this a charming is, to film. To me, like the quality level is something you get like from a college student dropout. I feel like, which is once again like there's B movies out there that exist and like whatnot, and I've watched a couple of them. But those at least like I don't know. Like this movie, I don't think was trying to be a satire. On Wikipedia, I don't see anything about being like this is a you satirical film. No, I don't think it was. You satire. know what this movie? You know I what this movie feels like? You know what this movie feels like? This movie feels like it was made by Ben Shapiro's The Daily Wire. Oh my god. Completely serious. Because they don't know how to do anything there. Because Ben's a failed writer... And he actually thought his movies were cool. You guys know all this content. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> that gives me no point of reference. Sorry. I want to hear. I want to hear David's like. Mm-hmm. I do have like I, I'm looking at my notes um, still, but I want to hear because you talked a little bit about your pros and a little bit about your cons. But like, I want to if you can go in more detail. I want you to like defend this movie more. Uh, yeah, buddy, put those fists start... up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I feel like we're in a boxing match. Like, well, it gave some David some light touch, and then Ethan just came in and just round out. I think, (laughs) I think it depends on how you go into this movie. Like, a bunch of all these movies, like, I have zero expectations. So, when, like, I'm not saying that this movie was trying to be good, but it's like, uh, you know, I was laughing at this movie right like it doesn't matter if they were trying to be bad or trying to be good like if i laughed i laughed you know i mean it's it's like if i was entertained by like that's insane that they thought this was good or like what is this dialogue like the the beginning scenes like his voice doesn't even line up with his mouth i'm just one guy uh like i was like what is this movie um I feel like all those scenes and then some of the uh, like fight scenes, I mean, they were just insane. Like uh, when they fought the tank, um, the tank guy, they were all shooting him. And then it was like uh, it was like clear that they ran out of ammo. And so they're like, we got to go hand to hand combat. And they like one i think the woman runs in first to hand-to-hand combat and she like gets knocked away and then they start shooting again and it's like wait they had ammo <laughs> they were like they just stopped shooting i mean that like made me die laughing because i was like that is why did they run right next to this and like clearly is taking all the bullets and you're gonna go like punch it to death like what are you thinking <laughs> So, you know what, David? Uh, I think the writers thought so many... that was a heroic sacrifice. That's how I read it I, as. 
personally. I, I don't remember right. anything about it's ammo, like, but I Because I before it was MMA like, fighter lady runs wasn't. in and bangs her shin and then says, my leg's broken, uh, our boy yeah. Donnie Chen runs in. He just gets thrown into oblivion, and we just never see him again. I thought he was, like, going to get up and run away. And you talk about the guns. Right. David, there are three very muted gun sound effects. I know you know what guns sound like because we did a fucking game show <laughs> weeks ago on this episode. <laughs> the guns are so muted. They have no impact. Yeah. I don't even think that they're working. I don't even think that they're holding guns, David. David, why did you make well, this movie? Well, they're holding guns, for sure. <laughs> but, I mean, they were so obviously, like, the flat flashes coming out of the guns were like the same uh like animation each time right and same thing with the blood and and obviously the sounds themselves i think my point stands is like you're you're saying like that's bad writing it's just like a bad scene and i'm saying yeah it is and that's why it was funny to me and and i'll this it doesn't matter that you're right was supposed to be good but i think if what makes it yeah. bad though and not in a good way is i don't think they were trying to make it funny like the reason you're i i, don't, I agree that i found it entertaining i was like this movie is who boy and i like watching these movies but but i think why i'm saying it's bad is because that wasn't their intent there's movies does that the have- intent matter like if you laugh and no the intent matter. does not matter i've said this on the podcast before um once a piece of art a work is is out there the author is gone it's the audience that matters only the audience remains so whatever you took out of it matters Every more than what they you. intent i will say though you have lower standards <laughs> than if, if you enjoyed <laughs> no, this believe. movie even this, a little bit you just got lower times. standards and that's fine and that's <laughs> valid easy, that's I'm your personal movie. journey on your idiot. your cinemography landscape here that's just the path you're on that's fine and you're yeah, you're more I, entitled I, to that than my opinion of your yeah. opinion however <laughs> it's just lower standards <laughs> Faces no, I agree. Just... I think you guys are you guys definitely know a lot more about cinemat- uh, cinematography, uh, perhaps. Uh, and so you see He's a lot trying of to do the I'm just, just I'm not don't. a big city boy. I'm just from just, the valley. They're using these big yeah, words well, like cinematography. I mean, just... That's his defense right now. I mean, that's what you're I'm referencing sorry. currently. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just making fun because no, they, no, no, no. I'm having more fun talking about this movie than I've ever <laughs> seen in this movie itself. Like. See, I think this movie is giving us double the entertainment. Entertainment throughout the movie and after. That's why it's as heated discussion after. <laughs> yes. And, and when you know what? And, and we're gonna be smiling, laughing ear to ear when we give it an F. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, all, right, for, all, right, all right. All right. No, I'll say that I mean I, I think I hear like both sides. I'm not gonna say it's the worst movie watch. I personally think Postal was worse because it was clearly trying to be a thing that like just goes against my like moral values, I guess, to a certain degree. Um, but yeah, this movie, I just think has a huge attention to detail issue that I don't like. Uh, like I said, maybe I would consider like watching it as like a watch along kind of thing where we're just shooting the shit and not taking it seriously. My thing is why well, reason I'm like going into why I feel like it's bad for me is because I feel like it's trying too hard to be serious when if they were trying to do campy, I probably would enjoy this movie a lot more. Um, a good example is the Street Fighter movie that me and Ethan talk about where that movie is bad in terms of <laughs> like the story. I can't even remember the story too much, but the characters are all goofy. It seems like no one's really taking it seriously. And that way, it, like it became fun to me. Yeah. I think that's where like I find these movies uh, like I, I I don't know, like I feel like B movies typically know that they're B movies. This movie didn't know it was a B movie. And I think that's hard for me to describe other than that way, where I've seen other B movies like horror movies, especially zombie movies. We watch other movies on here. I would consider B movies where they they if they are trying hard, they still know to a certain degree. Like, listen, we don't got. 200 million dollars we don't have green screen effects uh uh you know we we have maybe limited set space so how can we work best with that and still make it fun if we know we can't you, you know have the whole budget of whether it's having multiple sets uh maybe getting the mainstream actor whatever it is um you know there's i think exam trying to think of one example off the time i had i'm forgetting the name off the right the second um where was it 
that we watched last season. Uh, where was it? It's the one where they're in the school, Ethan. The oh, uh, corpse party. Corpse party, another zombie movie. Where uh, I think, what do we give that one? I'm trying to find it again. C. We gave that one to C. And I feel like the reason we gave it to C, if I remember correctly, was like it wasn't trying to be bigger than its shoes. When this movie, I think, was trying to be bigger than its shoes, and therefore it like falters, and that's what makes it entertaining. But to me, there's like an entertainment gap still where I'm like, it could be more entertaining if they were aware of the situation that they were in, which was we're possibly being hunted by the cartel. Um. (laughs) Yeah, when you mentioned (laughs) David or Devin, rather, um, oh, this is like a college dropout film uh, that that does nail it because that is the scope of, of someone that has no experience. They know how to use the equipment. And they want to do a thing. They got this. They got this energy. I'm not even saying that these people had energy when they made this film. They want to do the things yeah. that they've seen. And this is their first idea. And it's got no Definitely second like draft. Sure. It's got no like editor. You know, like when you write a short story and you submit it, and an editor says, "Hey, this is very broke and very cliche and blah 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 blah." You know, like try expanding on this. Try giving more personal information about this, whatever. This, this movie felt like it was just like, let's make a zombie film. And like, yeah, granted, I played 10 minutes of both of, of the video games. I can tell you right now, those video games don't have a story. I mean, I guess the second one had a character that talks to you, but like, this is just a zombie movie that's using the name just throw out there. And can we talk about that ending? They're like, yeah, the whole thing was a video game, but also it's about to start. Like, the actual thing is... But so it's, the, it was, it was it's a double thing. twist, I wrote, exclamation part. <laughs> double twist, yeah. All this was a it's game, a video game, but the that game is, like, video. also what is literally going to happen? Yeah. I think... Yeah, I think it was just kind of, like, showing, like, that was the last... I think it was just kind of loosely... I don't think it's a great ending, by the way. But, like, I think it's trying to show that, like... Yeah, it was based off the game, and that's why we got picked, which I think is a weird thing. Why right. are the gamers being picked? Like, what skill set specifically do they bring yeah, to be a dead some... trigger, which they never establish? Because they're, they're showing well, them guns. No, they, the, one of the yeah. last lines is is that, that point of view character could, like, just, just wanking off to the gamer crowd, being like, gamers are the future. You know, like, we got we got yeah. it in us, but man. between that and um, then what, like, Gran Turismo that we watched, which does a much better Based on a true story of a kid, actual gamer to racer. Well, but I'm saying, um, like, it does a better job of, like, why is he capable of this? Right. Oh, because he's... Oh, yeah. Like, that yeah. game they're showing is real life. I don't know what the game... Like, they should have put the game in there to at least... Right. Give yeah. us something to work with besides... But wait, the reality is real. Like, it's VR, but... Yeah, you can tell this movie was game. filmed in 2016 because of the the, the phone VR hel- yeah. helmets that they have on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like the, the single they, glove. And an Xbox 360, like, which is funny. They do that, like, say it's because they're gamers, but at the beginning of the movie... It was it seemed very clear to me that the reason they were being picked is like, oh, they're all like downtrodden. Like this is their own. This is their last chance. Like, except it, for the you girl know, at the that, bus stop who was just in. Yeah, like, they, the, they gave everyone else yeah, a backstory, was, but they well, for I her, think it was, like, yeah, they just she was just alone. <laughs> she just like didn't have any family or friends, I guess. That but might yeah, have been it, the last I mean, day of filming. Not... They're like, screw it. So, yeah. She doesn't get a. It, it, that didn't make any sense that it was like, oh, no, it was because we played video games. It's like, well. Okay, why did you set up the beginning part different? Then? And then were they like, uh, my other thing is, how do they find these people? Like the one guy was like basically homeless, I guess. And like, they're just like, hey, you're Johnny Knoxville. Uh, can you come with us or whatever? Like, right. <laughs> like, like, I don't that would make more sense if they were gamers. They were like, oh, I, I knew where you lived initially because I tracked your IP or something. I don't know. Yeah, and they, You um, beat me in this game. That's how I need yeah. to find you. <laughs> but yeah, they were like going around like, finding all the people but it, but they also like established that there is civilization but it's only a certain random distance of zombie land um and i also love the obama bridge which they said i was gonna quickly. mention that that's yeah. the only clever and thing like, granted it's in obama? mexico apparently yeah <laughs> it's funny uh, but they i was like did they say obama and then they were like no we gotta go to yeah. obama well you bridge know later in the movie every like, gamer like, needs a bridge so the obama bridge <laughs> They should have based oh, the bridge man. off of that. Would have been the same time, I think. This movie, the PUBG bridge, uh, would have been when not when filming. Oh, PUBG would boy. have been 2017. Oh, jeez, uh, that bridge, jeez, that bridge. Yeah, the PewDiePie uh, bridge. We said the N word. They should have green screened 
them walking onto that. Oh, that, yeah. that would have been like, you know what, David? They were doing satire. Oh, then they were, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a, a weird plot. It's it's you know Devin and I and David as well. You're in on this. Um, we we say all the time on this show that uh, you know plot holes, fuck them. If it's for the sake of the story, if it moves the story forward, if it helps whatever they want to say, it's okay. Not every not movies. Movies are not real life. Like they're fantastical. Even the ones that are as grounded as possible are fantastical. Coincidences are fate in film, right? Um, this movie has just so many logical fallacies and its structure on, like, what's going on. Our bad guys just decide, yeah, let's just blow it all up anyway. But, like, th- there was no change in why they made that decision. Why she had, like, oh, yeah, we need now to blow it up. She's just like, yeah, hey, yeah, blow it up. Blow it up. It didn't make any sense to me. Um, just th- all of a sudden we have, uh, uh, I forgot what the actor's name is, but, uh, he's the guy who turned on him. Who's like an old, uh, like, uh, I don't know, Russian, guy. but old, uh, um, uh, MMA fighter, well, wasn't he, um, from years ago. Uh, wasn't he Russian? He was speaking the guy in the, yeah, they I had the accent because the in real life he's, he's, he's Russian. Yes. The guy was zip tied oh, okay. to the chair. But they're all protecting the same country, by the way, but they never established what country and they all have different That's probably accents. for the best. I, I'm going to be honest. I really oh, don't interesting. know. I they said that at one point, well, cause uh kyle captain kyle walker says you know like you, these are because it was at the pool table scene where he comes in like these these kids are doing more for our country than we ever have or something like that and i'm like but you all have mm. different accents are you like nato but like no you're one country like are you interpol i was just i didn't even think yeah. about that i yeah. just assumed it was america i guess <laughs> Hell like, yeah I thought, though, <laughs> but i was just like there's just so many different accents that i was like yeah maybe i was supposed hey. to be hey, we're a melting first, pot but... baby that's our whole True. shtick now don't I mean, come after... here <laughs> but we're a melting <laughs> pot just <laughs> don't show up i, mean, I feel like zombie apocalypse like probably countries may dissolve right but wait we all watched that I, tekken I movie that after their... the tekken wars all it was all corporate you know tekken wars. <laughs> right <laughs> Man, that movie is much better than this one. Um, <laughs> I also anyway. think I want to point out to it since we're kind of on characters that like Captain Kyle Walker has a love interest for like a hot five minutes and they kind of she's forgotten about. Same with our narrator. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Right. He also has the girlfriend like and they finally and like kind of hitting just dies. Off she dies instantly. Yeah, because I mean, like he's you, fine. Devin, you've scene. seen more zombie films yeah. than I have, but I'm not, <laughs> yeah. in, you know, like completely naive to how these work. They want to give you a little bit of, of a reason to like them and then they need to kill them in a way that's interesting. A lot of these felt like shit. They're still alive. Get rid of them. Shit. He's still alive. Get rid of them. It's you just that thing to, like, the, without the any movie. impact. And, and like that's where some B movies do, like slasher movies, uh, in terms of horror, like slasher movies, the more campy ones will purposely like kill them off one by one and make it entertaining. And it's slasher movies, like whole like shtick is like, how can we kill this person in the craziest way that makes people oozy? You know, with right. Halloween, even though that Halloween's a good thriller movie, there's still some crazy like death scenes in that for the time, uh, that like made people uncomfortable. Like that's part of like a slasher movie. Um but then zombie movies too, yeah. Like usually, you build up, you know, uh, to like I've seen the sacrifice thing work, but usually, it, you know, uh, I feel like you have a lot longer with the characters before you do that. Um, I mean, we, Ethan, I will say you have watched a lot of zombie movies because you watched a whole series of them called Resident Evil. <laughs> Resident Evil, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but now I'm thinking of like uh, some of the like uh, Dawn of the Man, Dead. Man, I pine for, for example, the days of those movies after watching uh, this. <laughs> but like I'm thinking of like Dawn of the Dead, you know, movies like that where they don't kill people off too quick. Like it's sometimes they do come in succession, but like maybe it's a big swarm that gets multiple people. Maybe someone gets bit and they know they're done for, so they like try to sacrifice themselves or something like that. Like there's a lot of tropes and just a lot has been done. Right. Um, but I feel like this one just kind of was like zombies come out of nowhere they and die. then they move on. Uh, <laughs> They move um, on so I didn't quickly. really like the I didn't like the big mutant guy because he's like, oh, he's patient zero. I'm like, OK, are they going to do like a Resident Evil thing where this is going to be like the boss who they encounter multiple times? And oh, it's like, right. no, we just had quick lore for him. And then and he didn't matter because he, he, it's yeah, not like he pursued them later. It's not like he was no necessary the for the cure. They, they were even though they have to shoot him in the head, they know and shot him in the head. I would have liked a scene here where, OK, they shoot him in the head. It grows back or it doesn't affect him. Something. Right. Maybe he's bulletproof. Maybe he has armor on. Something like that to make him more scary because it just seemed like a buff zombie. 
who just yeah. took a grenade to kill. So like these are the kind of things, like I said, attention to details or decisions that I feel like if at least to make it a little bit more entertaining and like I would have maybe forgave some of the other pieces of this film if it just other parts I feel feel like were either more fleshed out or better decisions were made. Um I don't know. Uh Trust me, I actually wanted to like this movie because once I saw what it was about, I'm like, cool. Same. I love my horror movies, my B movies, zombie movies. But we go into <laughs> all these movies wanting to to <laughs> to like them, um, because no one wants to watch a a bad movie. No one like knowingly wants to wade into a bad movie. I guess we have the the like content angle that we could be like, yeah, at least I get to shit it. on a bad movie. David, I take no pride in 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 in, in any of this. <laughs> I take no like pride. You are. I take no pride. In this. I'm smiling, but I take no pride in this at all. <laughs> right, I'm actually right. really sad, and I'm Definitely trying to hold back my tears. You. He says as he oh, puts man. the shotgun to his head. I take yeah. no pride having to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we should move on to uh, giving this a, a tier ranking. But if anyone has any yeah. final like thing we haven't brought up yet, um, I know we didn't talk about the church, but none of that mattered. It was just another trope in a set. Picks up after this, and it is good because that'd be actually hilarious. Then <laughs> uh, sure. I'll just say one of the other quotes that. <laughs> That oh, I thought a, were funny, but crazy um, I wrote this is like it does the. It almost seemed like English was a second language um, for some of these quotes. Uh, the quote was only training you've been doing. You've been playing those games all day. <laughs> you know what <laughs> that, that kind of reads cool. to me as? Yeah. One take. Um, and someone who's bad <laughs> well, at line reading. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's Sam, glad to see you with the understatement. All right, dead triggers. Show me what you can do. I, most of my notes is just quotes. Uh, uh, next time, the bar formation. In the bar scene, I don't even remember when this was said, but I wrote down the quote, I'm going to spank that ass. What? <laughs> I oh, they're probably talking right. trash about playing, that. Problem playing billiards. Uh, Maybe we did watch a different movie. I don't remember that one either. Yeah, I, um, I'm telling yeah. you. This is uh no I read that one. Now if you don't stop, I'll have to put that gag back on you, which was like tape, <laughs> which wasn't a gag. Yeah, yeah. Right. It wasn't a gag, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and but he uh, just had to I get asked... a bottle of his Irish whiskey, you know. We didn't even did talk I... about the, the well, church, by the way, like at all. But well, like, did I, I mean, it's just before we move on from the hostage situation, did he escape out of his restraints or was his arms just never restrained because i just remember him reaching over for the shotgun i was I like know, wait, the, wait, wait the priest cut uh, cut him off he, he cut it he cut it yeah, yeah. but oh he cut the restraint i think i, yeah, maybe I he pulled out the, a machete or whatever and, and did it okay, um, okay. I, my issue with this with them that whole church thing i have with this whereas like like oh we're so glad to see you we're all like scared and stuff oh yeah we, we're gonna borrow your car, borrow your car and uh, we'll come back though and they're like yeah okay like i've been like there's no yeah once again, I I, um, there's a moment there where you come in like no one of us is coming with you create yeah have, sure. have a new character be in a new environment with them yeah. how do they react to that do they trust him like there's element like there's potential elements there that they don't take they're like yeah it's just to move the story along which once right. mean like ethan said i'm okay with but at this point in the film i'm like yeah some of the actions borderline all right uh and campy i guess but like what are we doing with this like what's okay they find these survivors are they is that the mission now okay no one cares we're, we need to oh and then the car sound effects they couldn't actually rev up a car that was clearly a stock sound and he wasn't actually oh, that bothered me i'm like that's so bad yeah, uh yeah what's another quote i had uh enough for the shit that was my almost pick for this enough of the shit. Uh, I don't think I had anything else. It's us. Um, we we still keep fighting. Uh, um, the, the well, I wrote trigger. down "Have a nice flight." That was that was when he threw the zombie over the the railing, which, which I think was I trying that was to be. Funny. I think they were trying to be more funny with it. But the reason yeah. I found it funny is because it didn't feel like his character would say it that. didn't work. <laughs> It didn't feel like it actually like he's all serious the entire film and he's like it felt like it was know, one like, take and they didn't get the things right, to do like, what they wanted. Yeah. Also, I of the part of the movie they're searching uh like area zero or whatever, and the tech guy pulls out something and he says, uh, he got a signal from the lab that's on this floor. And I was like, What do you mean you got a signal 
the lab put out a signal like what like a piece of equipment like the lab itself all of a sudden is online like what is that doesn't make any yeah. sense at all. and he's, he's obviously holding an ipad <laughs> what? but whatever i mean i feel like that would probably yeah. be what you would use anyway <laughs> um yeah i don't i don't think that part was right, uh, right, 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 bad right. but it was just like what you couldn't have like this piece of equipment is giving off a signal it must be in the lab it was like no the lab is giving off a signal um anyway yeah yeah all right well time to talk about what we do here on the sonic movie show the boys and i we we review these films give them a tier list and we get some points because we drafted this move these movies last time we watched my third pick today we are watching david's third pick of dead trigger there is sadly no counter picks on this film which is criminal we'll we'll see i don't know if you get any points well, no, we didn't counterpick this, so we're you'd not going to get any either. points. I know if you, I think you'd lose points if you counterpick. Oh, that. yeah, sure. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. <laughs> Let the delusions runneth from your cup. All right. So, if I, we if put I these in high, tiers means... and they get points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to explain more about what these tiers are, how we get there in three minutes or less, Devin, are you ready? You know. I'm trying to think of a way to tie in the movie. Uh, you know, we it all started. I was, you know, talking about rankings, and that was my last time talking with Ethan and David before the before the outbreak. Uh, oh my god! In which we do uh, this somehow, the show again. But still. we do the show again. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, you had to be there. Three, two, oh, yeah. one, go. So, folks, on the Sun Movie Show, we have a ranking system: S, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And it's all on a video game movie curve. So, uh, you know, if you see a ranking here, you're like, how the hell is that an S tier movie, video game movie? Well, it's because it's a video game movie and not maybe a movie movie. But it doesn't mean S tier video game movie can't be an S tier movie movie. Sometimes we get those. Um, anyways, I'm going to go through quickly what the definition of these are, but they're kind of self-explanatory, I think. Uh, S is superior. You know, it's we don't get too many movies in this category, but these are very top of the line video game movies. Highly recommend to anyone maybe you're not even know anything about the video game or don't watch video game movies we recommend these movies you have sonic the hedgehog one and sorry sonic the hedgehog 2 prince of persia the sands of time and detective pikachu as uh, kind of more old examples and then uh we go to a tier which are sometimes missing that secret sauce to get the s tier but still are very very great films we don't have really many negatives with them maybe none at all uh, like i said just missing that secret sauce we have mortal kombat 2021 sonic the hedgehog Super Mario Bros, the uh, uh, the, the animated one. And then we have uh, Tomb Raider, the newest one um, that we won't get a sequel to, unfortunately. Um, and then we have B tier, which is still pretty good. Maybe there's some things we don't like about it, but we let them go because this is a fun movie. This is a great movie. Um, we have Dead Space Downfall. We have Dead or Alive, which I think will be a good example of compared to this movie where it's so campy, but they, you know, had a lot of charm to it and you know what we had a fun time then we have resident evil the first one where it's a solid made movie that's memorable then we get to c which is most of our movies which are just average best way i can describe it it's average uh i would say it's probably since there is so many movies here i feel like it, it, c tier is the widest margin of uh ranking where sometimes it's hard to get out of c you know it's kind of like a mud pit it's hard to get out of there but most of the time, these movies, we have a lot of things we like, but there might be some things we don't like and we do have a problem with, and it's kind of hard for us to let those go. Maybe some things we wish they did differently, but still maybe not a disappointing movie. Maybe uh, you still had you know enjoyed it to some extent. Then we get to D, which is uh, movies like Assassin's Creed, uh, Hitman, Final Fantasy, Spirits Within, where they're, these are just bad movies. Uh, maybe there is some good stuff in there, but for the most part, it's bad. Uh, you know, uh, or it could even look good like Warcraft, but unfortunately, you know, it's not really memorable. Then we get to E tier, which is to me like just bad of bad. Uh, these are bad movies, badly made. It's hard to find redeeming qualities in this. Maybe there's some things, but for the most part, we'll probably never watch these movies again. We would not recommend these. Uh, examples are Blood Rain, uh, which is just that's bad uh monster hunter sometimes these movies miss the mark of what the movies were supposed to even be adapted of from uh that's e tier then we got f tier which so far is just one movie uh which is postal uve bowl classic where uh he tries to you know 
you know, just wants to say the R word, I feel like every two minutes and uh, tries to critique society of being too soft. But yet we just want to be Nazis. Is that the point of this movie? I don't know. But it's in the kind of racist tier is what we like to put it in the offensive tier. Like this movie was ugh to watch. Uh, hopefully no more movies go in there, but we shall see next. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Eric Devin, you did better than you did last time, but still not quite to your PB, your personal well, I'm to, best. Once again, I'm trying to, I think the first couple of times when I did get under three minutes, I didn't do the best job explaining, but now I'm finding that I balance. Agree. I think I once we get to the last one, it's a journey. Everyone's walking. Especially you, <laughs> yep. David. You're, bulk, you're bulking <laughs> okay, up, and so, now you're going to you know, yep. get, let those abs show to the end. <laughs> David, <laughs> I want you to show me your abs here and pitch us your tier suggestion for this film. It looked like you were riding um, a horse there, not pulling your shirt up to show your abs. <laughs> just like, oh, on the horse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to ride pony. this horse right up to the A tier. Uh, just kidding. Um, you know, I I have a feeling I know what you guys are going to say. Um, really? I am going to argue that this is a D tier film. Not because this film was meant to be campy, uh, but at the end of the day, I had laughs at the film, maybe not with the film, um, <laughs> but I was entertained nonetheless. And I think, uh, you know, during our discussion, we mentioned uh, the intent doesn't matter. Uh, and even Devin admitted that this could be a funny thing to watch as a group. And I agree. I would watch this as a group to make fun of it. Uh, where there's a lot of these movies that I don't know that I would do that because I don't think it would be fun. Um, so I'm going to call this a D. Even with all of the negatives, I think <laughs> it made up for it in the uh, just sheer amount of stupidity. Okay. Uh, speaking of stupidity, the opposite of stupidity is Devin. <laughs> I, don't know, I was just trying to say what <laughs> saying you're not stupid. Me, uh, yeah, I know, but I like the fact that you're thinking about it. You smooth brain. Yeah, I'm yeah, smooth yeah brain. I guess. You're uh, right. <laughs> what's your what's your tier <laughs> suggestion? Uh, so going into this conversation, I was more in the the E tier. If I'm being I'm being frank, I was in the E tier. This to me, the closest comparison I can get to just looking at this list again is Blood Rain where bad sets, bad acting, even with stars in that film, Meatloaf is the best actor in that film out of <laughs> other people who have great careers. Rest in peace. Uh, another Uwe Boll film uh, that somehow got a sequel. Um, got two sequels. <laughs> got two sequels. Maybe one day we'll get to them. Uh, and yeah, it's just like... <sighs> There is way more negatives in this that are just really bringing this one down for me. Um, like I did enjoy it. I think kind of maybe not to the same level as David, but I did enjoy it in the sense of I'm watching this probably one more, only one, one time and I'm going to get the enjoyment out of it. And I think it'd be good in a group, but as a, like maybe as a single watcher, like if I was just watching by myself, I'd be like, man, this. What am I? I could be doing something else right now. And I just feel like there's way more negatives, a lot of negatives. That even if I got a couple laughs out of it, it's not pulling it out of the the well for me. Uh, if, in fact, if someone was trying to help me out of this well, I think they gave up because they're like, dude, you're too far down there. Um, I don't think this belongs in F because I think F. I love keeping that as the this is downright offensive, in the sense of either like not even like a badly made movie just like this is offensive in the sense of like i don't like your opinions on society <laughs> a kind of way uh i think in addition to that should also be bad but like i don't want to put an f tier but i think just I, the closest comparison i can have for this film is blood rain um and i'm looking at the d tier films i'd much rather watch assassin's creed doom final fantasy spirits within Dude, even Ratchet and Clank, which I would say is a lower D film. Uh, Warcraft, I'd probably watch again. Any of the Resident Evil movies are w another notch above these, and those movies aren't perfect, but at least are generally well-made movies that do have some plot issues and character issues. Yeah, I like I I was hoping maybe this would be like a campy movie that we would somehow sneak into C or B, but I'm sorry, David, I think it's E. <laughs> 
Um, I agree with David in that it's not an A. Um, but that's where our, our similarities end. Listen, we know um, what you're going with. As I stated, this is the worst movie I've ever seen in my whole life. Um, but I can't give it enough because I do that. agree with with Devin that that is for like the offensive tier. Um, in my whole life, I don't think I'll ever see a worse movie. Um, uh, that's probably not true. Uwe Bolzel made a lot of films. We'll eventually see them. Eventually. Um, when Devin mentioned the Resident Evil films, I wanted to interject, but I'm doing better about not cutting people off. Because I wanted to say, you know what those films had? Entertainment. Because the purpose of a film is to entertain, I guess, or to make you think, but really it's through the act of entertainment. This film was not entertaining. This film was not good. Mm-hmm. This film was not even bad. This is a pile of electrons that I watched with my eyes. This is an E tier film. I mean, I disagree, but <laughs> I will uh, succumb to your ease. I'll uh, say this: I I don't think is I don't want I don't think I'm at harsh on it as like Ethan is. I feel like if we're doing the tears within the tears, Ethan's putting it like lower. Lower E. I'm this is the bottom E for me if I were to rank them the I'm tiers. In mid-E. I'm in mid E right here. <laughs> you're, I think, you're playing I think music in the, the mid other E movies yet. We've only had a very good movie. So maybe yeah, and I guess, you know, to be generous to David, it, David but... hasn't watched 50 movies prior to, to this season, yeah. right? So he hasn't seen any of the E's and he hasn't seen yeah, a lot of the A's. I want him you on know. because I want him to. Yeah. We must oh, have absolutely. Common man's perspective. That's why I'm enjoying this, this debate over here because I have such a naive co-host with me in yeah, the middle I mean, of the screen, up, and I um, love seeing seeing his reaction. Oh, this shot's not bouncy enough for me. <laughs> bouncy? All right, sure. Buddy, bouncy is fun. Have you ever had fun watching a movie? Because if <laughs> okay. you have, you wouldn't have enjoyed this one. Um, I'm not looking I for think... bounce in my movie, bro. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we're all doing this in fun. If, if folks at home think we're fighting, yeah, then obviously yeah. I don't think we're coming across as uh, uh, as awesome. goofy as we're trying. Um, but everything we've said is our truths, and I think our truths average out to an E if it's two E's and a D. Yeah, I think so. Um, so David, you got yourself one I'll say this. point. If Ethan did put it in F. I was gonna fight Ethan on it for David. No, I wouldn't have put it on an F. I wouldn't have. Put, uh, I mean, like, I, I mean, thought, I thought I'll, for a second you were going to. I'm going to throw like, this I'm out there. E, if you guys wanted to go F, you could have easily dragged me down there. But like, I, I'm not going to. You know what I mean? It We F is a reason F is there. Right. Um, and F I will say I, reason I F really there. do not believe that I am voting higher on this because it's my pick. Well, I genuinely had you a good put time. Your money and I believe you. Run, I believe you, David, tomatoes. because that's yeah. how we that's how we're doing this. I don't think any of us are yeah. like trying to win in the sense of being dishonest about our opinions. Right. Right. I, I believe you. And like, again, like I said, what you take out of this movie is as valid as what I take out of this movie. <laughs> But I won. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say um, this, though. We're about to talk about Rotten Tomatoes, which yeah. right. to me has always been a good way of, like, because there's been movies that me and Ethan have liked that have bad Rotten Tomato scores and vice versa. Max right. Payne was a good example. Like critic where, scores versus where we were like, yeah, oh, that's audience. a D. And, and, yeah. uh, and it was one of the I'm interested. I almost, uh, I almost oh. accidentally clicked on it because when I was looking for budget, but I was like, oh, I can't. I want to save it just in case I almost looked at guess. this too because I was looking up like IMDb stuff and I saw like the IMDb user score out of stars we don't but, count that. yeah right we don't count, we don't count that, that. Uh, if That's the budget is true that it was actually 10 million I 100% agree that this is E because <laughs> for 10 million dollars you should I mean, make a better movie there is like there is movies that have I'm going to say there is movies that go to the movie theaters to this day that like maybe even A24 would maybe produce that uh maybe have like 60 70 million like i don't think 10 is like super low uh, but that there's a four there low. in order to make a movie you do need a few million dollars you know yeah. what i mean so like i'm not saying it's well, not low i'm just saying yeah, like yeah. i'm not gonna say you. it's like holy shit only 10 million i'm gonna be like i yeah, yeah. But like <laughs> Ethan was saying, like this felt like a college kid made it. Like I, I think a college Devin kid could make this. Um, yeah, ten million dollars. Dude, we could probably make it less than t- enough stalling. I think we can make this movie. 
<laughs> Devin, <laughs> please. Uh, uh, so, folks, uh, we should explain ourselves here. Um, mm-hmm. God, I feel like that's all we ever do is explain ourselves. Why can't I be me? Why do I have to explain myself to you? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, so there's decimal points in these in our scores because we take the Rotten Tomatoes user review percentage and have that as a decimal that's in. That's how last season I won against Devin with less than a point is because we got a couple points and then some decimal from all of these uh, user scores. So, Devin... Uh, what is the Rotten Tomatoes average user score for Dead I'll say Trigger? audience score, just so people don't get confused. Audience. This is, audience. There's the right. critic score, which is like the the usually like uh, on the left, and then the yeah, right we're not users, we're, we're watchers. Yeah. I'll say there is no critic score really on this. There is one review, uh, but uh, I'll get to that in a second. I don't think I read one in the last episode. I meant to do that, but I wasn't sure if it was a real one. Um, but yeah, uh, does anyone make any guesses? I want, I want David to go first since he, I feel like he might uh, think that more people I'm are gonna on, say, he, on his end uh, of. I'm going to say movies. 33. Okay, we got 33. If we're going prices right rules, I'm going to say zero. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's ever been a movie that's gotten zero. Uh, no, I guess, I, honestly, if oh, I no, were sorry, to really guess, I'd here. say 11. If I were I to really just guess. on the right, there's a movie called Divorce in the Black that is zero. Uh, the score is four. <laughs> four that's great. how many reviews fewer than 50 it says okay uh, all right and then there is no like critic score but there is a review which they gave it four out of ten and they said uh and this is bobby lapire from film threat sounds trustworthy he said uh dead trigger isn't the worst film ever but it oddly plays things safe then the audience reviews, some of the audience reviews here is just how bad can a zombie movie be? This one is a tight race for number one. <laughs> An absolute <laughs> mess. And this becomes perhaps the dumbest ending in history. It's really bad. You tried. It was more. So. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get them on the pod. Amazing. Screw Letterboxd. I want like people that actually write in their reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> oh, man. Well, David. Lundgren's hair dye steals every scene. <laughs> True, he didn't dye his hair black. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. David, your new point total is a cool 13.31. I will say this. If you did not get those two points from your counterpick on my movie, you'd be only a point two away from me. So What? Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm at 9.11. He's at 13.31. So with that two points, he's got like a good lead on me. Um, and you did get that point zero four. Wow, <laughs> that's that's right. That's right. That's that, right. Hey, that could be the difference. You don't know. It's, it's every point counts. Wow. They say. Well, let's hope. Let's let's put our hands together. Let's reach uh, reach across. Uh, I meant kind of like we're holding hands, but you know, let, let's 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 do what we need to do. Uh, you can't even tell where the bounds are on your on your little circles here. Um, and let's hope and pray that the rest of the movies. Well, that's for these 10 movies are much better than this one for all of our sakes. I hope all of mine are S tier. I hope all of David's are S tier. And that's fine. even that's the Uwe Bull one. And mine. <laughs> and he doesn't, des- like, Uwe Bull doesn't deserve an S tier film, but David does <laughs> after having picked and <laughs> suffering through Dead A Trigger. Solid film. And <laughs> I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I'd like to thank you guys for joining us, but we're not over yet. We all know what's up ahead of us. It is time for everyone's new favorite category-based game show, Zombie Games Are Us. So, folks, <laughs> this is how this is going to work. Devin and David, at the end of every single episode I on the Sonic Movie Show where we review video game movies, I put them through a game show of my own making. In six questions, and there is a tiebreaker, like last time, they're going to earn five points for getting it correctly. If they miss a question, uh, if they get it wrong, rather, then the other person has a chance to steal. The very simple. I'm going to read off the name of a zombie-based video game. I'm going to read off the description of it as well. You're going to answer whether you think it is a mobile game, a Nintendo Entertainment System game, or an Xbox 360 game. So you're going to buzz in at any point (laughs) and you're going to say, I think this is a mobile game or I think this is an NES game or I think this is an Xbox 360 game. It's right. You get five points. 
I okay. also have this written down so as question NES, zero. It's not like we or anything. It's right. It is NES specifically that. from that. So we have. I don't know if you meant uh, like just a Nintendo. Nintendo in general. No, no, Console. No. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. This is this is mobile game. So for has your phones. Deep cuts. So so does NES, does. <laughs> and so yeah. does mobile games. As we've seen, they made a movie based off one of them. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Solid one. Sure. <laughs> Keep yourself in denial. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and as always, you buzz in by saying your own name, right? Are you ready? Ready. Okay. Our first game is called The Walking Zombie 2, colon, Shooter. David. And the description is, or do you want <laughs> me to read it? As no. I was going to read the description. The description is mobile. Okay, David says mobile. He is correct. It's a mobile. You steal my strat now. You know he knows <laughs> yeah, the real I mean, strat is just. A... I mean, I mean, after the three colons, it's like <laughs> it's a mobile game. Um, I will read the description off anyway because I find it funny. This is a description from the App Store. The world after the zombie apocalypse is a grim place. You were born into it. So you'll have to struggle to survive and fight against many kinds of zombies, bandits, and dangerous boss monsters. Oh, so yeah, there's the a boss difference monsters the, would have given it away. A, there's a difference between monsters and zombies, which I find interesting. That sucks. Apparently. So you got in your reality, you had not just a zombie apocalypse, but monsters on top of it. That's, <laughs> that's right. It was yeah, like what Dracula? <laughs> like, I don't werewolf. understand. He's undead too, right? Like I don't even know what the. Our hell? second game is titled. Zombie Nation. And the description is The object of the game is to wreak total destruction on everything you see. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. David. David. This this is giving me old school Xbox 360 vibes. Okay. This was the bad game that was $5 back in the day when Xbox 360 was new. Okay. Mm. David thinks it's an Xbox 360 game. David, you're incorrect. Devin, you have a wow. chance to steal. I don't think it's an NES game. I'm going to go A. Day or Devin, rather, says A, NES, or sorry, A, mobile game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mobile. Devin, mobile. you are mobile. incorrect. It is an NES game. Oh, that's yes. crazy. They, didn't make, they yeah. didn't make games like that back then. They They did. <laughs> They did. There's a couple bad dudes beating up some zombies. Our third game of six, but there is a tiebreaker, is as follows. The game is titled Left to Survive Zombie Games. Get to the chopper and unleash a fiery bullet storm on your opponent's base to steal their resources. I'm going mobile. It just sounds like something made in china and they just quickly translated to just get all the that's SEO what exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> i'm hoping okay. if i'm wrong whatever yeah. but like i feel like i've seen that one before <laughs> devin says that it is a mobile game and devin you're correct it is a mobile yeah. game congratulations halfway go. through folks and we're tied up five to five that's the three now. question that's number three. four game yeah. number four is titled Dead Ahead, Zombie Warfare. Description David. is... Sorry, Dave, go on. 360. David says it is an Xbox 360 game. That is incorrect. Whoa. Okay. Uh, I'll read the description I'll... unless Devin wants yeah, to chime in no, now. Yeah, please, 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 please. All right, the description is <clears throat> for Dead Ahead, Zombie Warfare. Defend your bus and don't let the hungry horde eat the living. Defend the bus? Mm. Uh... Oh. I'm going to go mobile now. Speaking about dead things, yeah. my uh, earbuds just died. The flames of disaster! Going mobile. Going mobile. <laughs> uh, Devin says for Dead Ahead Zombie Warfare. I feel Warfare, like I've seen the ad for this game for mobile. <laughs> he thinks it is a mobile game. A game for your iPhone or your Android phone, your mobile device. That's completely correct. It is a mobile yeah. game. Well, that is there's now the description because I thought maybe this yeah. might be a sneaky NES one, but then I was yeah. like, if you're defending the bus, defend from the bus. Yeah, that's a yeah. little. That's a little. You're just turning left and right. 
Yeah, you're, you're hitting okay. things, or like you're just pressing. I, I don't even know what this looked like. I just Google or I searched, like, for all of these, I searched zombie. So they all have zombie in the title. And then I'm like, okay, I like mm. this name, you know. Um, all right. Our penultimate question here. Question number five. So what's the score right now? It's 10, 10 to, to 5. five. Devin is okay. in the lead. You have a chance to win still, David. <laughs> and yep. obviously you have a chance to tie. Agreed. Uh, or I don't think you have a chance to tie. Agree. No, I don't think it's possible to tie. <laughs> All right. Agree. <laughs> Our fifth game is called All Zombies Must Die. Devin. Okay. Whoa. I'm going to go Xbox. Devin oh, says Xbox. We've been getting the Xbox ones. It's got to come up eventually. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Ethan. Is this uh, a toad situation? This is I don't a, know. This is an Ethan. This is a toad situation. It just Devin says kind of Xbox. He didn't say Xbox 360, so he lo- no. Uh, it is an Xbox 360 game. That is correct. Damn it! It sounds of that era right. a little bit. I was either that or this NES. is an XBLA game. Uh, and the description <laughs> reads: Boom! Headshot. You're all that stands between six billion zombies and the world's supply of delicious, supple head candy. Yep, that sounds like oh something that'd be on Xbox, and then maybe when Microsoft Windows Store. <laughs> right, 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 mm, yep. right, 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 right. Okay. Nice. Well, Devin, you well, won. GG. But we're going to do one, our last question. Too locked in. Uh, it's too locked in indeed. For fun, here's the final question. Question six. Double or nothing? No. <laughs> if you two agree to it, then I'm willing. But I, This I, is like I, the I, second I time he's tried to do willing. this. I'm not gonna, I mean, there's no benefit. <laughs> hey, Every time I'm guys, losing, I'm just going to put it on the table. If you ever want to do if a double winning, or nothing, you got to say it before the game starts. You know what I mean? If you want to add that in, because no, I got to know if I'm losing or not. Fair enough. All right. Our sixth and final, and this time a fun question, because the others are just too fun, is this game is titled Zombie Apocalypse colon Never Die Alone. Four unlikely David. heroes. David. NES. David says NES. I'm ethening a, this out. It is not an NES Evan game. Had, oh, damn it. Devin, you want to just, just feed him even more? Can you read the description? Because you put so much work into this. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, I, pre- I appreciate that you appreciate that I that try. I try. Oh, well, see, I'm trying a different trying tactic. The well, because there's mm-hmm. been clearly biases happening, so I'm trying to get them better. Trying to court some favor back. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, the description for this game that it's just not uh, I forgot what David even said but, um, for his answer. It's not an NES game. The description is four unlikely heroes find themselves caught in a fight for their lives when zombie when the zombie apocalypse hits their Canadian community. Banding together for both humor and survival, and armed with everything from guns to cricket bats, the four must find a way off the island. Dot 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 together. As opposed to separately. Um, I think that's Xbox. The description's way too concise and specific about what's yeah, in it. True, true. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't Coherent. put that in for the I- an iPhone game where it's just like, you, you just tap the screen, bro. Like, And there's some <laughs> microtransactions. You know what it's you're getting. It's just yourself. keywords. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. Fun game. Devin, blast. You're correct. This is an Xbox 360. This is also another XBLA game. <laughs> Devin, you have defeated Damn. David 20 to 5. That's 4 to 1, Streak really. Streak over. Streak over. 4 to 1. <laughs> Devin, you have you earned. You my economy. It's brutal. <laughs> Devin, you have earned your sixth trophy. I need a rebound there. Six. I needed that one. Six. Oh, man. No bueno. Boys. 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 I got to wait. I got to wait Achi while I'm hot. Machi. I got to wait for another like two months, month till we do this again. God, what are you talking yeah, about? I need you to cool down. Take this, time out. This episode was two weeks after the last one. Yeah, I'm saying another. We still wore the same thing, two though. Weeks? <laughs> two weeks is one month for me. Oh, and the zombie apocalypse. Who knows? Time is a flat yeah. mirror. And I, baby, I drew the Joker face on that mirror. I held it up to society. <laughs> all right. Well, enough of all of our shit. This is the Sonic Movie Show. You're watching on YouTube, I hope. If not, you're listening to it on podcast services everywhere that you can find them. Um, hey, you know what? We're on social media, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, threads, etc. At Sonic Movie Show. Check us out. In the description of this episode, I want to see people who have seen this movie give their opinions. And I say this almost every single time. But this time I really mean it. I really mean it. I'm going to forward all of these, these to David critics as well. a lesson. And tell them how wrong they are and that this is a fun movie. Oh, 
<laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for, for joining us. And, and thank you, Devin. Thank you, David. Thank you, Ethan. Yes, I thank myself. It's okay to give some self-love. We're going to see you next time on another episode of the Sonic Movie Show. I believe the next movie that we are going to be watching is that animated film called Resident Evil Damnation. Oh, that's right. I thought it was Five Damn. Minutes at Freddy's. I forgot I got a Five Minutes at Freddy's yeah. steal later in the draft. Yeah, it was your fourth pick. Yeah. Your third pick that's, is Resident uh, Evil that's Damnation. That's making me nervous. That's making me nervous as well. Um, so, yes, check out that movie. And we'll see you next time. As we always like to say to end out the show, dead trigger out. Trigger out. Dead trigger.